banners are one of the most creative and decorative parts of Minecraft, but one that is not used by many players, so learn everything about this customizable item in my banner guide. So the first question of course is how do you get a banner? Because these items do naturally generate, but not very much. So the places you can find them naturally generated is the end city, at the pillager outpost, and in certain parts of the woodland mansion, as well as in certain villager structures of certain biomes. But these are rather boring and plain. To make a banner yourself, all you need is six pieces of wool and a stick, and that will give you one banner, which is a fairly expensive recipe considering that six wool into not even a two block item isn't very good. But either way, that's how you get them, and I would suggest building a wool farm if you want to do a lot with banners. For instance, you could use my wool micro farm design, which works quite well with these. One other great method of getting banners is from expert level cartographers. And in Java Edition, you can also get banners from shepherds. Now it is very strange to me that you cannot get banners from shepherds in Bedrock, considering the fact that shepherds deal with wool, so it's only natural that they would have to do with banners. And before we have any more info about about banners, let's quickly talk for a minute about the loom. Now interestingly enough, the loom has been around for less time than the banner has, even though the loom is integral to the banner making process. The loom itself can be used as a banner making item, it's also the workstation of the shepherd villager, and it has a texture on the side that very highly resembles an empty bookshelf. When you place a bookshelf next to it, it does align very well with that. Although the texture is not identical, it is similar enough that it definitely looks like an empty bookshelf. And you can also use this texture on the top to look somewhat like piano keys if you want. But of course it is mostly used to add patterns to banners. And in Java Edition it's the only way to add patterns to banners. Before the loom was added to Java, you would make patterns by having a die shape in the crafting grid next to the banner. And at that stage in the game, banners were more or less useless, basically just because of the massive amount of effort needed to make a good looking banner and tons of die. For whatever reason, that method is still available in Bedrock, but of course the method to get them with the loom is as well, which I would only ever recommend. And the loom itself is crafted by two planks and two string on top of that, which will give you one loom, making it a very cheap item to get. So now that you have your banner, you want to add some patterns to it. Well, to do that, you're going to need dye. And so if you want to make a large amount of banners, you want to collect yourself a large amount of dyes. Potentially even finding yourself a good source of every dye in the game can be smart if you want to dive headfirst into making banners. And we just right click on a pattern and take it out to get that added to the banner. For instance here, this highly resembles bricks, maybe like the ones from the Mario games, but overall it's quite a cool texture and you could use that for a lot of things, but you can layer the patterns. If you couldn't layer them, these wouldn't actually be very cool, but you definitely can. So let's say you want your banner to look maybe like this. This could be like a brick wall with some sand beneath it, whatever you want really to imagine it as, and you can place that down, and you can see here that now shows up as well and you can do this up to six times, so you can have six different patterns on the banner. And the pattern names, which may sound a little bit weird, like let's say Chevron, Base, Mason, things like this, or Pale Dexter for just a line, these are historical names for these patterns in real life, which I think is a really cool touch, as Minecraft is technically a medieval game. It goes through like this with all these different patterns you can see here. There's also like an X shape here, a plus shape, some little lines at the top and bottom, some lines going through that, and sort of some squiggly shapes. But not all banner patterns are there by default. Some of them you have to make, and those are the flower charge, the creeper charge, the skull charge, the thing, the globe as well as the snout. And the flower charge is made with an oxide daisy and a piece of paper. The creeper charge is made with a creeper head and a piece of paper, making it very difficult to get. The skull charge is made with a wither skeleton skull and a piece of paper. Then thing is made with an enchanted golden apple and a piece of paper. Globe is bought from master level cartographer villagers and snout is only found in the piglin bastion. I'll show you what these all look like and how to use them. You put your die and your banner in the loom. Then you put in your charge and you can see it only gives you one option. So for instance, that was the flower charge and now we have the creeper charge. There is the skull charge. The Thing, which is the old Mojang logo. Then we have Snout, which is sort of like a square pig snout. And finally we have Globe, which 
roughly resembles a globe or maybe like what looks like the earth. And so those are all the additional patterns and they can be very, very useful for making certain banners as a lot of the default patterns just do not give you dye in the right places. And between all these different shapes here, even ones like this, which is really cool, the base gradient, that one is very useful as well as the standard gradient. You can make a massive variety of different banners. I believe there's well over one trillion different types of banners that you can make. Although in terms of ones that are actually recognizable from one another, I believe the number ends up being closer to a meager 23 billion different banners. So this is definitely the most customizable item in the entire game, really being like a sort of customizable painting. But let's say we made this mess of a banner and we think, well, we don't like that, but let's say maybe we just like the brick part of it. Is there a way to get that brick part back, removing those other patterns without having to fully throw away the banner and get a new one? Well, there absolutely is. And all you have to do is get a cauldron. So once you've placed down your cauldron, place a water bucket in it, and right click with the banner in the cauldron. You'll notice some of the water goes out of the cauldron, but also the last pattern we use is disappeared. So for instance here, we're now back to just that brick pattern. If we pick up some water and put it back into the cauldron, we can then take off even more of these as some of the water is consumed every single time we clean this, as this is known as cleaning the banner. We can even clean it down to nothing if we want, although there's not too much of a point of doing that. But basically this functions as a banner eraser, if you made a mistake or if you're just experimenting. But now let's say we made a banner that we're rather happy with, maybe this banner of the Japanese flag. Very easy, just put a red circle in the middle of our white banner. And we want to copy that, but we don't want to necessarily go through all the steps of adding the die to that again. Especially if we have a banner that's a lot more complicated than this one, we might have five or six different patterns for it. and copy Copying that on a large scale is nearly impossible, let's say if you wanted it as a flag of your world. And so all you have to do to copy banners is just place both of them in your personal crafting grid or in your crafting table crafting grid. It is absolutely up to you which one you use, and you'll notice that these duplicate and the die is duplicated over with absolutely no cost of extra die. And so once you've used the die to make your one banner, you can have that die be basically duplicated over to the other banners, which is also really good because let's say you've made a banner pattern that uses, you know, a bunch of different dies that aren't super easy to get, especially early game. Then all you have to do is just get all the wool for it and the dies itself will copy over as long as you're able to make an original master copy of that. Also something of interest is that banners only stack to 16. They do not stack to 64. So if you want to get a very large amount of banners down, you will need to get more inventory inventory room than you would for, let's say, standard blocks. Now before I show you the process of making some beautiful banners like this, I'm going to first show you some of the other things that you can do with banners. Okay, so the first one has to do with maps. So we want to mark out a position on the map and we're going to name this banner, Banner Central, to sort of show the name of this area. We're going to put down that banner in the center of the area that we want to mark out. And now we're going to right click with the map on that banner. And you can see not only is there an icon with the color of the banner on the map, there is also the text that says Banner Central on it. And I may explain this more in a future video, but overall it's a very cool effect for marking out different areas in your world. What's good to note though is if you break that banner, that will no longer appear on your map. And also, if you want to get that marker off of your map without destroying the banner, simply right click on it again to toggle that on and off super super easily like that. And unfortunately this feature is Java Edition only. Now something that is interesting about the banner is that if we break this item, it still retains its name. With the banners, because of the way that you mark them out with maps, that name will stay on the banner no matter what, whether you break it or place it. Also you probably already noticed this about the banner, but they do have an animation that makes it look as if they're floating in the breeze. I like this because wind is a concept that really isn't talked about a lot in Minecraft or shown, but I think right here you can see there is a bit of a concept for that. The other thing of course is that banners have no hitbox, meaning they could be like an interesting maybe curtain-like gateway to a house. And these are really great for decoration, they can even look like maybe shower curtains or just standard curtains. And artwork, I would say banners are really one of the most underused house decoration items as well. Now if you're in Java Edition, something you can do is add a banner to a shield. This process also downscales the banner. 
So let's put the shield and a banner in the crafting grid. You'll notice the color of the banner transfers, so it says purple shield, but it downscales it, and you can't really see that on this one because it's just a pure color. But if we put a patterned banner with the shield, which is doable, you can see that does downscale it. And so if you're trying to put banners on shields, you'll want to make sure that actually works at a smaller scale. As my cactus got a little bit warped there, and it definitely does not look as good as the original one did at all. However, that's not always the case. Certain patterns are actually improved on a shield. For instance, this pattern right here. If we put this with a shield, you can see that forms a very cool looking texture. And on there, that makes an awesome PvP banner. Maybe something to show off that you have maybe like a country or some other interesting thing. And in terms of different banner patterns themselves, you certainly do not need to just make base things that could be made with simple pattern combinations. You can make very complicated things, including one of my favorites, which is flags of different countries. Now basically every single country flag in the world is makeable with banners, but I would say country flags are awesome because they don't have to be real. For instance, you could make up a fake country flag, and that could be the flag of your entire world. You could place that down wherever you go, and that can be a great way of marking out an area that this is yours, and you can probably tell banners are one of my favorite items in the game. Interestingly enough, one of the first things I did on YouTube was make banner tutorials. In fact, I think I have exactly 100 of them, although a lot of them are quite old, so the quality is a lot different than my current videos. But something you have to know is how do you make something that looks like this? Not necessarily specifically, but what is the process to making a nice looking banner and the art behind that? I'll show you. I'll also show you some specific examples of pretty banners to learn the effects that people have used to design them. Okay, so the first one is this nether portal banner. So we're going to start with this purple banner and add to it a magenta poly. That's going to add these sort of lines on our banner here. The next thing we're going to do is add a purple field mason, and that is the bricks. You can see what we're doing here is we're layering those two things together. By layering those, we get sort of this swirly shape that resembles the nether portal. But to make that look even more so, we're going to add this, which is the magenta border indented. And what that's going to do is that's going to sort of add the illusion that around the edges of the nether portal, it's it's going to look a little bit more different and it's also going to add the texture to it and of course to add the nether portal itself we'll simply add this black line around the edge which is known as the black border and so you can see right here that's how we make this nether portal banner just by layering different things and eventually giving us this really cool result however in the next design we're going to use certain patterns blocking other patterns to give us our full effect and i'll explain that right now and that effect is shown on this boat banner now the boat banner is made with a light gray banner and the first thing we're going to add is a light blue chief. Now, if you remember, the chief is this pattern at the top. You can see here there's the chief. And what that's going to do is that's going to start to build the illusion of a sky. The next pattern is a brown cross. Now, this is eventually going to become the sort of mast and part of the boat. Now, we're going to add a white per pail. And a white per pail is half of the banner being turned to white. Eventually, this will be the flag. But you can see when we added that, it sort of gets rid of that boat look. So, we're now going to add to that a brown per fess inverted. That's going to make half the banner now be brown. But we're going to use that to form the base of the ship. Then, to make this actually have the shape of a boat, we're going to add to it the light blue border indented. You can see that that sort of cuts out parts of the banner to give it the look of a sail, maybe two sails. There's one problem though. We still have this sort of annoying bit on the bottom and it doesn't really look like it's in the ocean. So all we have to do to fix that is simply put on this, which is the bottom third of the banner being blue. That's the blue base. And you can see there's the boat banner. So again, that's sort of how you're building on top of things, but you're also getting rid of stuff. I mean, this looks nothing like a gray banner. And you can see here only a very small part of this is actually gray. Now we're going to make this zombie banner and the zombie banner uses a banner pattern which is going to add a little bit of complexity to it but it's still very good. So basically we're going to have a black banner with the school charge and it is going to be a lime school charge. You can see that we have like the green face. Next we're going to go on to a light blue perfess inverted which is right here. Next we'll have a purple base which has the bottom third of the banner be purple. This is going to be like the pants of the zombie and the shirt of the zombie. Now you can of course see this basically resembles the zombie already. The problem is we have some of this extra stuff making it not really look like a zombie. So we're just going to get rid of that by having a black pale Dexter. And then we're going to add a black pale Sinister, just getting rid of those edges. And we're going to finish that off by having the black base indented. And that'll sort of give the illusion of two legs, which is going to finish the zombie look of this banner. 
me place this down, you can see how we made those combinations to give us the zombie banner. Now this banner has something interesting to it, which is it uses the gradient. But anyway, this starts with the red gradient to give us the illusion of a sunset, so that people though can see the actual sun that we're referring to with that sunset pattern. We're gonna add an orange flower charge, as well as a yellow rondel, and that'll give us this actual sun in the middle of the banner, but so that we're not just looking up at the sky, although as is, this banner does look fairly good, and you could just keep it like that if you wanted to. What we're going to do is we're going to add this background to it, which is really easy. We're just going to put in a triangle at the bottom, which is called a brown chevron. That sort of looks like a mountain, but to completely complete the banner and really just bring it all together, we're going to add this, which is a green base indented. You'll notice here that it looks a lot like bits of grass or maybe like some trees, or if we're looking really far away, it's maybe like a dormant volcano or even just a mountain where there's no trees at the top and that's sort of just dirt because what we have is a landscape. And I would say landscape banners are one of my favorites actually. For instance, you can see here we have like this, which is like a mountain top with the moon above it. That looks really cool. We also have this thing that's underwater. I like the view of the underwater as well. Now I know we invented all these banners, and a lot of these banners have been around for a very long time. But one banner that I did invent is this one, which is this cactus banner. You may be wondering how did I invent this? Well, I did build off of some previous concepts I'd seen people do, but the way that I perfected this is basically using what I call banner theory, and it's really easy and I'll go over it very quickly, but it's more or less what will empower you to make any banner you want customizably. So the first thing you want to do is before you even start, make sure you know exactly what you're trying to make. For me, I think I'll pick one of the flowers in the flower forest here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a light blue banner because that is the color of banner that I think would work best for this. We're not actually going to use the flower charge because the top of this doesn't really look like the standard flower shape. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put this in here. And the first thing I'm going to think about is what is something that I want to be behind all the other layers. And of course I have a bunch of dye here. I would recommend having all the dye colors when you're trying to experiment with banners as well. And also an erasing pot of water. So we're going to put in this and we're going to start the fine art of banner making. The first thing we want is a stem for the flower. So we'll put that in right there. And the next thing we're going to do are some leaves. Now there's nothing here that works supremely well as leaves, but something we could do is actually take this, clear off that first layer, and first start by putting on the leaves. So for this, I think I'll use the fess in the center. Then after that, I'm going to put in the line in the center of the banner, which is the pail. Now what I'm going to do, because I want to make that look more like leaves and less just like sticks, is I'm going to grab the background color of the banner, which is light blue for this, and I'm going to put in this. You'll see that kind of rounds that off, giving us more of the illusion of leaves. Now we have three patterns down, we have three patterns left, and I am making this as I go. And the first thing I know we need, no matter what, is dirt at the bottom of the banner. That'll look like this. However, However, what's also good to know is that we probably shouldn't do this first, as we already know we need this, and we might need this to overlay something first, and so I'll just get rid of that layer here real quick. And we're going to start with a flower, and we have two patterns to do that. Now we're going to use red because that was the color of the flower we were looking at, and just looking at our options here, we don't have a lot, we could use this. However, now that I think of it, something we could try is clearing off the layers off of the banner again, putting red in there, going to the top layer like this. We're going to put that indent on there again, and now you can see it looks somewhat more like a flower, but I think to finish the look of a flower, we should put in this shape right here. And you can see there we have that. Doesn't look a lot like a flower, but I think the idea comes across of a tulip. And to finish this, I think we're going to put in some dirt on the bottom like that. And there is my flower banner. Now, is it perfect? I would say no, and of course I can perfect it. But I think if you look at it, it does get the idea across of a flower. And the great thing about this process is you don't have to look at a banner and just say it's done now. You can look at it and you can perfect it and perfect it over time. And so that's how you customizably make a banner and think through how to do that. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Hopefully you're not bored of banners by now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.